Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about reference management software. In the COVID era, one of the biggest things we harp on is the need for evidence-based practices. But with so much evidence around, even as a physician, it's hard for me to collect everything, store it, catalog it, and incorporate it into research and sharing it with colleagues. I use a reference management software called Bookends, but there are plenty of options out there from EndNote and Mendeley to Zotero and Papers. I like Bookends because I'm an Apple guy, so it integrates well with my iPhone, iPad, MacBook, iMac, everything. Um, but there's plenty of other options out there. The majority of this YouTube video is going to be a screencast showing how I utilize the reference management software to import PDFs, to catalog, in different categories and to search through existing literature if I have a clinical question. But there are other things you can do as well. There are plugins for Microsoft Word, for Pages, and it's really helpful if you're writing a manuscript to be able to automatically import your references directly into your research for publication. A lot of reference management software also has plugins for web extensions. So if you are browsing the internet, you're on PubMed or you're on the Lancet or New England Journal website, you can automatically pull free articles into the reference management software, add references and automatically attach PDFs too, which makes things really, really easy. A lot of the software also has built-in features for annotation, file renaming, sorting by columns, whether you're interested in the authors, the date that you added the article, the year the article was published, there's so many different options. So we're gonna go ahead and get into some of them. All right, this is the beginning of the screencast. The first thing you have to worry about is where are you gonna get your information from? And this has kind of been the issue with COVID-19 and the misinformation that's been circulating throughout social media and the internet abroad, but reliable sources like PubMed, where you can find peer-reviewed journal articles, very, very important. And PubMed sort of aggregates journal articles from a bunch of different journals, but you can go directly to places like the New England Journal, JAMA, Anesthesia Analgesia, Anesthesiology, Journal of Critical Care, a bunch of different journals that I use based on what I do for a living. But PubMed is a good place to start. So I'm actually going to be searching for something based on a question a follower had asked about sepsis and DIC. One thing I would recommend when you're trying to get an overview about a certain topic and learn about the pathophysiology is look at review articles. So I'm gonna select review I'm going to try to look at relatively recent stuff here. And I'm going to go ahead and select this one. It happens to be a free article, but I'm also logged into a library. So if you are working for a hospital system that has access to databases, strongly encourage you to figure out how to go through PubMed using that login. I'm going to download the PDF straight to my desktop. All right, now we are done with that. So this is bookends. This is basically the software I'm using on my MacBook currently, but I have it on my iMac, I have it on my iPhone as well as my iPad. And most of the time I'm actually using it on my iPad to annotate these journal articles, but it syncs up across iCloud. So it's really easy for me to pull up all the journal articles, regardless of what device I'm using. First thing I'm gonna do is actually import. This is the journal article we just downloaded. And I'm gonna put it into an existing folder I have called sepsis. It's gonna ask me to go ahead and attach this PDF to a reference. I'm gonna say a new reference and go ahead and attach it. And there it goes, it's imported. So now I see the article right here I actually have a summary of it here on the far right, the actual PDF here, and here's a listing of the journal articles I have within the sepsis folder within my critical care folder. And you can see a lot of these things I recently imported using bookends, but I migrated from EndNote. And keep in mind, this is just what I use. There are lots of different options out there. EndNote is considered kind of the gold standard, but I used Mendeley before that. Zotero is an option, Papers, Red Cube, all these different things. I'm using Bookends because it works well with my Mac, Apple-based workflow, but there are a lot of options out there with more features. So one of the things I wanna show you all are the options within Bookends. This has been configured for me, so I use Microsoft Word. I have my attachments in my iCloud folder drive, and uh, that's how I'm able to sync it up to everything across all my devices. 
One thing I like to adjust from the get-go is the default PDF reader down here. I use a program called PDF Expert. So going back to the actual application, let's say I want to actually open this document in a real PDF viewer. I can go here and open PDF with any number of things. I use PDF Expert, and it's going to actually open it directly into PDF Expert. So I can use all the features and go from there. But you can also view it directly within the bookends application. Some of the other options I like, it's preferences. The way that I have these listed, I have the date of the article, the title, and the date I imported it. But there's so many different columns you can use. I try to keep things simple, but you can add any number of things, the authors, the publisher, how many pages are in the journal article, so on and so forth. So whatever your heart desires, but I like to keep things simple. Summary is basically referring to all this information on the far right. I honestly don't look through all of that. I just open the PDF directly. But again, it has useful information like the PMID for trying to share the journal article to colleagues. Um, obviously, the title, authors, all of that good stuff as well. A lot of the other options are a little bit more advanced. Um, I don't really toggle from the default, but they're all there. Now I want to show you something that I like using this for. So we are going to stick to this application and this particular folder, sepsis. And I've got a bunch of articles here. So I'm going to open up Microsoft Word and just start typing stuff. So let's say I'm doing a journal article, a lit review on sepsis. And I start typing something, blah, blah, blah. Bookends can install a plugin directly into Word where I can say, all right, I want to use blah, blah, blah from this article. I'm going to highlight it, insert citation. Now I'm going to go to something else, blah, 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 two. And let's say that is from this article. I'm going to highlight it and go back to Word insert citation there. So you can see these internal citations are being constructed in the body of my manuscript. Now let's say I finished everything and I've got a manuscript that's ready to go. I need to create a overall works cited section. Well, now I can go through scan document. It's going to scan through all those internal citations, generate a bibliography, and I can select any of these default options. I think there is a way to add additional templates. And then in other software like EndNote, which is a lot more complicated and robust compared to bookends, you can actually import a lot of the pre-made templates from big journals all around the world. So I'm going to say, let's just do, let's do an MLA 8th edition. I'm going to hit OK. And all of a sudden, right here, you've got those two internal citations listed in that format. Simple as that. And this is very powerful if you're submitting the journal to the manuscript to more than one journal, because they may each have their own quirks when it comes down to how they want their references formatted. So this is extremely helpful. So in general, I try to keep everything nice and organized. I've got big sections, anesthesiology, critical care, mechanical circulatory support, things that I'm interested in, different disciplines within surgery, research I'm working on, and, and just I, I like to stay organized. So reference management software like this is the way to go, in my opinion. And again, there are a lot of options out there. This is what I use. And um, that basically concludes the screencast. All right, well, that's a wrap. I hope you all enjoyed that and found it helpful. I'm really curious to know what you all are using on your end, though. So drop me a comment below. Let me know what software you're using, if anything, or if this video has made you more interested in pursuing an option for reference management, or if you do something completely different. I know when I was first getting started, I used to just have folders and different categories within those folders, and I would drag and drop PDFs that way. But now that I've grown into my professional career, I was looking for a better option. And as a tech guy, this was, this was perfect. Reference management software has come a long, long way in the last couple of decades. And I think it's something that behooves us as practitioners of evidence-based medicine to really incorporate into our practices. So drop me a comment below with your thoughts and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care.